What's up, YouTube? So we're carrying on with our dive into Goa Trance. And today we're going to talk about the 303 or Acid Lead sound that is incredibly prevalent in Goa Trance. It's featured in uh, Goa Trance tracks quite extensively. So yeah, let's dive in and have a look. Today we're looking at a plugin called D16 Fozion. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It is an emulation of the TB303. One of the really, really cool things about it is that the sequencer that's built in there functions in a very similar way. I just want to give a shout out to Plugin Boutique for sending me this plugin. So yeah, let's dive in and have a look. So the plugin actually comes highly recommended by a lot of my producer friends and acquaintances. And Judging by the sound of the plugin compared to my 303 replica, it, it sounds pretty damn close. It might not be exactly the same, but I think this is going to be about the closest you're going to get in a plugin to not only the sound of the 303, but also a wide variety of the sort of functions of the arpeggiator and the sequencer. And I think that's kind of what makes that sound is the way that you input the sequence. And I'm going to kind of show you guys what I'm talking about. So as you load up the plugin, it does come with a sort of preloaded pattern. So what I usually do is I will just hit pattern right over here and then that allows you to like clear the pattern and you can then start by inputting your own notes and stuff. So due to the nature of the uh, plugin or due to the nature of the 303, it's a very, very basic synthesizer. So in terms of the sound parameters, there's like only so much you can do with it. So I don't mind using presets here. It's only going to change so much. I think the main focus with the 303, in my opinion, is the sequencer and the very, very particular sound that it's got. So if you don't know what the TB303 is, you're going to probably pick up very quickly uh, when you hear this uh, plugin and you're going to be like, oh, OK, yes, it's that sound. I know what you're talking about. So the cool thing about the sequencer in the 303 is it breaks apart the notes and the gates and the other various parameters that it allows you to sequence. So it allows you to, for example, record in a melody or uh, punch in a melody and then alter the gates after the fact. Whereas a lot of newer sequences after that attempted to be more user friendly, I guess you could say. But at the same time, it created a completely different approach to creating these sequences, which altered the sound and altered the way that these sequences were created, obviously. Basically, what I'm talking about is for each of these steps in the sequence, you choose whether it's playing, whether it's accented and whether it slides to the next note. And you've also got a individual control over the note. So what does that mean? Let's basically go ahead and punch in a gate for each of these steps. So once I've got my gates in, now I go ahead and I punch in a melody to the sort of scale of the track that I'm working in. So as you guys probably know, if you've been following my channel, I kind of pretty much write everything in C minor, which is probably a cardinal sin if I'm going to make Goa because Goa is generally in Eastern scales and stuff like that. But to be honest with you, I don't know all that much about music theory, so I'm just going to keep things simple. I'm not going to try to uh, do things that I don't really understand. So. Let's just keep it to C minor and we can kind of transpose it if we need to, to fit the rest of the track. So here, what we do is you can either click in over here to click into the pattern or you can click next, 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 next. I'm just kind of used to using a sequencer like in the next, next, next kind of uh, situation. So I kind of count in these rhythms in my head. So what I'll do is I'll, for example, um, know that the third note I want to have like an accent or something. So I'll, I'll go one, two, and then punch it in and then one, two, three, punch it in. So I kind of count it out in my head as opposed to visually clicking and, and that kind of thing. Um, I guess it's more of a sort of rhythmical approach. Um, but anyway, I digress. So here, what we want to do is we want to start punching in a melody. Let's just punch in random notes in the C minor scale. So go, let's go a G and then one, two, three. G sharp, one, two, three, let's do a D sharp, one, two, let's do an A sharp, one, two, three, E, G. So now if we play, it's going to play that entire sequence through. Let's have a listen quick. So 
so the interesting thing about the 303 and similarly um, in Fasan is now you've got a separate control over the octave per step and the accent per step and then the slide, which is like a portamento per step. And that's what gives it that kind of really recognizable 303 or acid lead sound is the accents and the slides. So let's go ahead and randomly um, punch in some accents, some slides, and maybe change the octave up and down. How cool is that, hey? It's super simple. Um, if you just know a couple of notes in the scale, um, you're able to get these very kind of varying patterns out of it by just playing with the slide and the accents. And what the accent is, is it's kind of like a velocity difference. But like, unlike, you know, in MIDI nowadays where you've got, you know, 127 different values, you've just got on and off. But then here in the actual settings, you've got what, what those different differences do. Um, so like whether it's on, if it changes the decay, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But like I said, it's a very basic synth. So we're not going to dive into the sort of sound design stuff in this synth today. I'm going to kind of uh, focus more on the sequencing and uh, MIDI and melodies and that kind of stuff. Because again, that's kind of like, I think the strength in Goa Trance. So like I said, Originally, we went through and we created one pass of our gate patterns, but we created a gate on every single 16th. So now we can go ahead and we can create different rhythms using that one sort of pattern that we've created. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the kick and bass so we can hear these variations. It just becomes a little bit easier when you've got another rhythm playing. And I'm going to play around with which steps are on and which steps are off. And this is, I think, the true beauty of the 303 style sequencer. And uh, because, you know, it, it creates that kind of like evolving type of pattern. So Fazion actually has a MIDI out in the plugin. So it allows you to record MIDI into another MIDI channel to sequence other instruments and stuff like that, which is very, very, very cool. Um, I'm going to get to that later, though. So here, what I'm going to do is let's just play around with what notes are on and what notes are off, or what steps are on and what steps are off. It actually sounds like a certain Infected Mushroom song, kind of. So here, what I want to do is let's actually put some delay and a bit of EQ on the low end so it's not interfering with our kick and bass. So one thing that I've noticed is quite, uh, that is quite well used in the Goatrons genre is a ping pong delay or any delay, but they like to use a very short feedback, kind of just to create more space to the actual synth itself as opposed to trying to recreate an atmospheric effect, you know, like the kind of delays that I often like to use. You know, I like to often overdrive the feedback 
to create that kind of wishy-washy sound. So here, we're not doing that. We're just creating a cleaner, wider sound that kind of echoes once or twice in the feedback, and then that's it. So let's see what this sounds like. So here, another really, really cool thing about this is um, you can change the pattern length. So you can create these kind of polymetric kind of patterns um, that, you know, don't loop at the same 16th step size every time. And another cool trick is to, you know, alter the pattern length over the entirety of the track. Again, creating this kind of like evolving melody uh, or evolving uh, sequence in the track. So check it out. If we, if we put a uh, pattern length to something like uh, six notes and uh, you'll hear kind of uh, creates less of a regimented kind of pattern, but then every few bars or so, it'll kind of reset itself. So remember I said you can send the MIDI out of this plugin and record it in another channel. So this is where it becomes really, really awesome is you can record these kind of polymetric changes in the step or pattern length. You're creating these snippets of MIDI, which you can then copy to other VSTs like Serum or the VSTs I'm gonna show in my next few videos and stuff like that. But yeah, anyway, so here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up a new MIDI channel and we can set this input over here to take the MIDI out of Fossion. And now let's just let it play for a bunch of bars while we're recording this MIDI. I'll probably just set it to MIDI channel one. I'm actually not sure if it matters, but let's just do it just in case. And let's record it while we play with this pattern length to kind of create these varying evolving MIDI lines. <laughs> Now we can even go back and start filling in those uh, gates that we actually took out on those steps and just record out that full MIDI pattern just in case we want to use it later on. We can always take the MIDI notes out. Um, it's always cool to have that MIDI. This plugin allows you to save the actual pattern within the plugin, but I think having it as a MIDI is a little bit more powerful, you know, saved within the actual track. That's very, very cool. So let's just run through all the steps here and just make sure all these gates are on. Um, now let's just record another snippet into this MIDI channel. Awesome. So here we actually have the ability to turn off uh, Fossion's internal sequencer. So now we can actually drag this MIDI back onto the channel and we've now got MIDI control over our synth. But at the same time, we've kind of generated that sequence in the same style that we would have on an actual 303. So it's reminiscent of the kind of sequence that you would create on a 303, if that makes sense. So here we can go ahead and chop up these variations that we created, sequence them, do all sorts of stuff. Let's listen to what it sounds like with the rest of the track. <laughs>
Awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks again to Plugin Boutique for sending me this plugin. I'm going to post a link in the description where you can grab it for yourself if you are keen. I highly, highly, highly recommend it if you don't have a 303 already. So yeah, like I said, hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. A big thanks to IDM Mag, proud supporters of the dance music scene and my channel. So like I said, due to the simplicity of the 303 itself and this plugin, I'm not going to be creating any presets with it. As always, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. See you guys next time.